entire story begins with plants, because they are the source of all life. Plants provide the air we breathe and the food we eat, the fuels we burn and the medicines that help to keep us healthy. For 330 years, the Royal Botanic Garden Edinburgh has been exploring remote corners of the planet, researching, identifying, classifying plants and unravelling the complex relationships between species. But today's expeditions have a new sense of urgency and a different reality. Climate change, habitat destruction and the need to feed, clothe and shelter our growing population all put ever-increasing pressure on the planet. The botanic's fundamental task to explore and explain the world of plants gains new significance. There is a new urgency to describe and understand the world's flora and a growing need to communicate the importance of plants and other wildlife to as many people as possible so we can preserve and protect them for the future. If current trends continue, a third of all plants could become extinct within the next 50 years with potentially disastrous consequences for all Earth's interdependent species including us. Faced with such unprecedented extinction rates, scientists from institutions around the world have joined forces to discover and describe as many missing pieces as they can. The botanics experts are globally respected members of international and local teams working within the world's biodiversity hotspots. In the heart of Asia, on the border between China and Myanmar, runs the Gauli Gongshan range of mountains. Here, Martin Dixon is working with a team of local, national and international scientists to catalogue and preserve the flora and fauna of this unique area. Because it's isolated, it means an awful lot of the plant material is unique to that location and it's been able to develop um, pretty much undisturbed for the, you know, for the millennia. One of the main tools for conservation in any area that we work in, and especially in the Galagongshan, is to have an inventory or a checklist, because without that, you've not really got an idea of what you're conserving. One of the things that we're very aware of is the increase in access to the areas we're actually in. That makes a big impact on our five-year project because we need to move uh, quicker in some areas where the accessibility is increased because we may lose some of those unique plants within those areas. Plant samples are dried and pressed in the field and stored with detailed notes about the plant's location and growing conditions. Thousands of miles away, off the coast of Yemen in the Middle East, Tony Miller is working with a team on the group of islands called Socotra. Socotra offers a really unique opportunity for research. It's rather like finding a new Galapagos in the 20th century. It's really unusual to find a group of islands now where there have been no large-scale extinctions, in fact no extinctions at all, where the local population is still living in balance with its environment. Tony and the team collect hundreds of photographs, notes and samples. Botanics experts are undertaking this kind of internationally respected work in around 40 different countries across the world. And important discoveries are made at home too. David Long has explored the Himalayas and South America, but now travels more often to the highlands of northwest Scotland in search of the ancient and previously overlooked bryophytes. We now think that the bryophytes, particularly the liverworts, were the very first plants to colonise land. So this has really meant that bryophytes have, have kind of shot to stardom in recent years in the, in the kind of evolutionary botanical world because of, of their significance. One of the most interesting things when we go up to the Northwest Highlands is that we're finding a, a lot of bryophytes, particularly leafy liverworts, which you wouldn't see again if you travelled from Scotland to the Himalayas. They occur nowhere in between. One reason we have so many in Scotland, apart from the wet climate, is the quality of our air. They're indicative of a healthy environment. And if it's healthy for lower plants, it's healthy for, for people as well. Wherever they come from, field collections are sorted in Edinburgh. Dried specimens go to the herbarium, a vast archive of preserved plants. Seeds go to the nursery, 
and all living specimens must go into quarantine to be checked for pests or diseases. So begins a painstaking process. Plants are put through rigorous scientific research. The real discoveries may be yet to come. The most common question I'm asked when I return from an expedition is, have I collected any new species? It's often a lot more difficult to answer than people think. In, in order to establish that it is a new species, we have to compare it to other things which have been described before, and that's where the reference collection in the herbarium becomes essential. Often when you're deciding whether it's a new species or not, the first thing you do is look at the, the gross morphology or the, the big picture of what you see with the naked eye. But quite often the difference between a new species is in the minute detail, could be like hairs on an anther or the, the, the curvature of a, a certain structure within the flower. And that's where now the detailed research has to go on at the gardens. These extraordinary images are produced by the garden's scanning electron microscope, magnified to more than 100,000 times life size. There are even more advanced methods. DNA research is an invaluable asset because we can catalogue the world's biodiversity and also work out how the plants evolved. This gives us information to support conservation projects around the world. Being able to identify a species and understanding its evolutionary and ecological relationships brings us closer to protecting it in the wild. Meanwhile, in the research glasshouses, living plant material is propagated, nurtured and grown into healthy living plants. Nurturing plants into life takes expertise and plenty of patience. Lessons from the laboratory come to life in the garden. Freely open to the public, the garden receives more than 700,000 visits each year from people of all ages and from all over the world. Classes in the garden give thousands of primary and secondary students from all over Scotland a chance to study the school curriculum in a very different setting. Teachers and adult learners take part in the education programme too. Exciting events and exhibitions help to bridge the gap between art and science. Professor Stephen Blackmore, director of the garden, is both a distinguished scientist and a passionate communicator. With all the threats to plants around the world, it's vitally important that we should redouble our efforts and increase our emphasis on collecting plants, studying them, bringing them into our living collections and preserved collections and respond to the urgency of the situation in the world. But a second thing that's really important is that people need to understand how they can play a part in helping plants have a more sustainable future. Because plants can be propagated and can be restored back into the wild, there's a lot we can do to reverse the damage that's already been done. The Botanics has one of the world's largest botanical research collections, with more than two million dried specimens and 17,000 living plants grown from wild collected seed. Every one of them has a story to tell. When you come into the atmosphere of Athens... We can share the legacy of over 300 years of scientific research here at the Botanics. We can interpret that so that people understand biodiversity and see how they can engage with it. And working together with partner organisations across Scotland, we can open up the subject of biodiversity, show people what they can do for a better environment here and around the world. Now, more than ever, the Botanics has a fundamental role to play in telling these stories and explaining exactly why people need plants. The garden's ambition for the future is to bring scientific experts and the public together in a continuing dialogue on the big issues that affect us all. You can help us leave a growing legacy for our future generations. Call us on 0131 552 7171 or visit our website www.rbge.org.